All right, so in this episode, we're going to create the first NPCs that our player characters are going to meet in their starting point. And I'm going to use the tavern trope. We're going to have a tavern keeper in a place where the players come to gather. And I'm using this trope. There's a reason that it's used so often. Because taverns make excellent spots for our player characters to meet up uh, and start their adventuring. Taverns are places where people gather uh, for meals, for drinks. We have travelers that stay there in the inn. And this creates an incredible environment to trade stories about different things that are going on in the world. You have traders sailing into town, people moving overland. Uh, you have high and low, you know, sort of the criminal class all the way up to merchants, even nobility, uh, perhaps coming slumming around or whatever. So this is a great environment to begin our campaign. And the person that runs the tavern is a great person to kind of create our first character using some of the techniques that I talked about in the last episode. So now let's build Zodi, the tavern keeper. Hello again, my name is K.R. King. This is my YouTube channel dedicated to homebrewing a campaign where I talk about some of the techniques I've used. I've been playing since 1975 to start homebrewed campaigns to make it uh, as easy and pain-free as possible, but keep it interesting for your players and get them to be invested in your world. So today, as I said at the beginning, we're going to have our first NPC that our char player characters meet uh, when they all get together and start adventuring. And I'm using the Tavern Keeper uh, we've seen this a million times, as I said, there's a reason for this because of this gathering place. I'm also going to outline a few other characters in the tavern. They're not going to be quite as vital as Zodi, the tavern keeper, but they're a potential, as you'll see, for the player characters to have connections to the tavern, reasons that they all meet there. Uh, so Zodi himself, we have to have an origin story for Zodi. So here's going to be sort of my origin story. Now some of this the player characters are going to be aware of. It'll be sort of general knowledge. And some of it he'll be secret. And Zodi will, might have knowledge about the player's characters. Maybe some he doesn't know. He'll also have knowledge about the city of Dramos and some other places. Again, everyone has connections and webs of uh, relationships and and you know we'll talk about how these are going to work with your player characters. So here here is a sample origin story. There has been a Zodin's tavern in the town of Dramos for 60 years. Zodin the Elder was a smuggler. He was a trader and a seaman, but mainly he was a smuggler, something of a criminal. He had made a big score. And unlike many of his compatriots, Zodin was determined not to blow his money on wine, women, and song. He wanted to make an investment. So he bought a rundown tavern near the wharf. He fixed it up, created Zodin's tavern, and he was a success. He was very personable. He had lots of friends, both high and low. He knew the various smugglers and rogues, but also merchants, traders, uh, even some of the higher level people in Dramos. And his tavern was a magnet for adventurers who were coming into Dramos because this was the gateway to the northern lands, the unexplored territories, uh, tons of different things going on. Uh, so he was very successful and he passed his tavern on to his son, uh, Zodin the Younger, who was even more successful. Uh, the Knoll Wars that had plagued the outskirts of Dramos were over. The humans and elves were victorious. Uh, this meant more people coming to Dramos, more trade. He expanded the tavern. Uh, he created an inn with rooms for people to stay overnight, a livery stable. Uh, and he wanted to pass on the tavern to his son, uh, Zodin III, who was always known because he started working at the tavern at eight years old, and the various adventurers and patrons used to call him Zodi as a nickname, something that he sort of hated at first, but it became his nickname. And everyone expected Zodi to take on this successful business. But Zodi wasn't interested in taking on the business. He hated running the tavern. He used to tell people that the stench of stale beer, because every morning he'd come in, he'd sweep up, and then he'd have to mop out all the beer and food in the floor. And that stench, he used to say, it stuck to everything. And all he could dream of was escaping this place, to go see the wider world, the stories he heard of adventurers in combat. Plus, Zodi's uncle, his mother's brother, was named Alaric, and he was a famous soldier. In the Knoll Wars, he'd led successful battles. He'd been killed on the battlefield, and his platoon had brought back his long sword and shield and gave it to Zodi's mother. 
And she hid it away because she did not want her son to become a soldier. She wanted him to stay home in Dramos and be safe, not to die on some battlefield like her brother. But as fate would have it, there came an opportunity for Zodi. For the orcs had a huge uprising. There was an orc chieftain named Ragnok. Ragnok the Merciless, he was called. And he united the orcan tribes to the east of uh, Dramos to retake their ancestral lands that had been taken the hills to the southwest. And they raided farms. They killed all sorts of settlers. They were a real threat to the town. And their cry went out to raise soldiers and whatever. And Zodi volunteered. And he became a soldier. And in fact, he was a good soldier. He was a strong man, dexterous. He was also highly intelligent for a soldier. He quickly adapted to the life. He learned tactics. Uh, he, he liked the camaraderie of his troops. But what Zodi discovered was he hated war. He hated what it did to the populace. He saw the villages that were raised, uh, that were raided by friend and foes, the famine, the pestilence. He hated the outcome of battle, the cries of wounded men, those dying on the field, begging for water. He hated the stench of death, of bloated bodies in the sun. And he used to tell his comrades between battles, if I could only go back to my father's tavern, if I could only smell that stale beer again, I'd be the happiest man in the world. And a year into the campaign, a packet of letters came to the camp, and one was from Zodi's mother. And she told him that his father had died. And she was worried that she wasn't going to be able to keep the tavern. She might have to sell. And he wrote back, he said, please keep the tavern. Don't sell. I will be back. Six months went by before he was able to come back. And in that time, the great battle of the barren hills in which Ragnarok was killed, the army was victorious, and Zodi could return. And Zodi brought back two things from this battlefield. One was a wife. Her name was Valina. She had been a healer on the battlefield. And she was the daughter of a barbarian fighter named Drexos, who had been part of this final charge to defeat Ragnarok. He'd been killed. Uh, and she was a healer on the battlefield. They met each other, fell in love. He brought her home. Zodi also brought back a secret. For in the final battle, he'd been separated from his men, chased by a group of orcs. He'd fallen into a pit into a cave. He'd seen there was sort of worked stone in this cave and he could hear far at the back something large, something moving, something he didn't want to meet. So he climbed his way out to daylight and while he was climbing something got into his hand and he brought it back out and he looked and it was an elaborately carved crystal dragon. And something about this, Zodi could feel there's something here. This is a magic item of some kind and he put it in his tunic and he told no one about it because he was afraid that his superiors would see this as loot for them, not some lowly common soldier. So he told no one about it. So he returned to Dramos with Valina. He's running the tavern. He's very successful, but he still had this item. So he worked with a local conjurer uh, and learned enough the rudiments to become sort of a basic wizard level so that he could identify this item. But when he tried, all he could find was, while it was magic, it was not any kind of magic that could be identified, at least at his level. He, don't, he doesn't know if being a higher level wizard uh, might be able to identify, but he keeps it secret. He knows there's something here that he must be very careful with. Sometimes at night he will look at this carved dragon and the way the light flickers, the candlelight off the various faces of this carved item, and he wonders what are its powers. But so far, he has remained a secret. And th at this point is when our player characters are going to meet him, when they gather at Zodi's Tavern to begin their adventuring career. Now, I've got a bunch of characters here. It's first Zodi. Now, I'm going to have his characteristics at the ready. I took 27 points and I created a character. I'm not going to show his characteristics right now. It's not that important. It becomes important, and the reason I always do these characteristics for these first NPCs is in case there's a battle inside the tavern, there's a fight, or there's some reason which Zodi or his associates have to go with the player characters. I don't think so, because the player characters are going to have their party and they're going to go off and do stuff. So Zodi is going to be basically fourth level fighter, first level wizard, uh, multi-class. I had to give him a 13 intelligence for that, uh, and I gave him that so that he could have the identify, because he did not want to show anyone his crystal dragon. And again, I'm going to make that, I think, elder magic. I'm not quite sure what its powers are right now. Not important. Not until he needs to really trust the player characters before he mentions this. They have to get up in level and power. So there's not going to be anything about that right now. Valina, I'm going to have as a second level cleric, and I'm going to make her, a, uh, because of her barbarian background, the Tempest uh, domain. 
I'm also going to have a couple of NPCs that work at the tavern. If you think about what it would take to run a tavern, you may have a cook. You could have Valina be the cook, but you might have someone else. Probably just a normal cook, not nothing special. You can make them, you know, they're there for some secret reason. And again, you can sort of play with that as you go along. If you think, I know, someone's on the run and they take a job as a cook uh, at uh, Zodi's tavern. And then maybe a bouncer guy, a guy that helps... Uh, Zodi keep order in this tavern because of course guys are drinking men and women are drinking and you know getting out of hand and he can be an ex-soldier uh, he can be someone else who's connected to the NPCs because what you're always thinking about is how, what is the connection here to to Zodi's tavern do they know Zodi did they know him as a child if they only know him by reputation and when you have character classes so let's say someone picks to be a ranger maybe the guy that works at Zodi's Tavern is an ex-ranger of some kind so that there's a connection there. You're thinking about who these people are when the player characters have rolled up their characters. So I want to mention at this point there's a guy with a, a, a great uh, YouTube channel called The Dungeon Coach. He's done great stuff for me and I'm putting up a, a, a thing here. I'll have a link to his site. He talks about ways to start a campaign. Seven ways are really interesting and one of the things he says in there is he says your players can talk to you about how they may know this starting point. So, for, so using the dungeon coach's uh, uh, starting technique, you can ask the players, how would you know Zodi? How would you know, uh, would you know Valina? If, you know, again, if there's a barbarian in the group, that's an obvious connection. How would you know this uh, bouncer? So you can allow the players some freedom here. But I found that to be really interesting from the dungeon coach. Notice a few other things I threw in there. The Orc Wars, Dragnock the Merciless. Because I'm always thinking about this frontier campaign. You had all these people who come to this new land and there's indigenous people living here who they are pushing off their land. So the orcs have some resentment and they had these lands. And of course they're orcs. They were savage killers. You know, they, they love the taste of man flesh, you know, that sort of thing. So they were pushed away for a reason. A leader comes around, this Ragnarok the Merciless, and unites these tribes ordinarily being orcs. They don't get along well. They, they, they're... It's difficult for them to cooperate, all this kind of thing. And here comes this great figure who unites them for this battle, and then he's defeated. But the orcs still in the world may look upon Ragnarok as a great hero. There may be a movement out there to, to, to once again attack the human. But I, but I have that as a history that your player characters would know about. They'd know about the orc wars. They'd know about Ragnarok. They'd know about the battle at the Barren Hills. This would be common knowledge. So if you're playing along at home, you know, create some starting NPCs or a starting NPC that your player characters are going to meet. Thanks again for watching my channel. If you've liked what you saw, please subscribe. I come out with material every week. I'm going to be, build, be building this homebrew campaign as we go along and uh, some other techniques and, and things that I use. Uh, I've got links to other videos here. Until then, keep playing D&D and tell someone else about it.